Hi there, and welcome back. In this video, I want to show you how you can use the new ChatGPT, <laughs> GPT-40, which is the Omni model, right inside SketchUp. I've just updated my OpenAI Explorer extension, which is here on the right, to version 2.3, and that allows you to do all kinds of things, including vision. As you can see here on the right, I am asking questions about what I'm seeing right here in the SketchUp model. All right, so let's uh, delve into this in just a second, and I'll show you how you can do this uh, right in your own version of SketchUp. Don't forget to check out my book, Architectural Design with SketchUp. It covers all of these topics and makes for a great desk reference. You can find it where books are sold. There's also a link to it on my site, sketchupfordesign.com, together with lots of additional tutorials and news. Okay, let's get going. So first of all, of course, you have to get your um, own copy of the OpenAI Explorer extension. And same as the past versions, you actually cannot find it in the extension warehouse. Um, and you will have to get it from other sources. One of those is the Sketchucation plugin store. And you can go over there uh, and download it and install it. Or if you have the Sketchucation um, extension installed, you can, you can go that route. Or you can um, go to my website. <clears throat> the link is right here, and I'll put it in the description as well. Basically, under my projects, you can find all my SketchUp uh, extensions. And then on that page, a little further down, <laughs> you'll find the, the downloads, <clears throat> where you can download the extension as an RBZ file, which is, of course, the packaged extension file that SketchUp uses. And then within SketchUp, you just go to Extension, Extension Manager, and then click on the load extension button and then you can load it into your system. So same procedure as before, nothing, nothing new there. And then once you're, uh, you have it installed, of course you have to have an uh, account with OpenAI and you can actually find that link right here um, in that menu item, OpenAI Explorer, and then you click on get OpenAI API key, at which point you get uh, pushed over basically to the um, OpenAI website <clears throat> where you sign up for the API access and you get yourself that API key, which allows you to do all of this. Now, the, the benefit of doing it this way around um, is that you actually pay by use. Uh, the, the way that OpenAI charges is by how much you use, how many tokens basically you use. And uh, that often, in my experience, has been cheaper than, than buying a monthly subscription and actually lets you do more things. So in our case right now, for example, we can use that 4.0, the Omni model, a little earlier than anybody else. So in any case, um, same installation procedure as before. And then this dialog that I'm showing here is, of course, the one that comes up when I go to OpenAI Explorer and then OpenAI Explorer dialog. I've got mine on a... I know, handy keyboard shortcut so that I can pull it up at any point. But basically, <clears throat> this is what you get then. And this is your interface with um, OpenAI's API once this is installed. So what's new? <laughs> so let me show you. First of all, I made a few changes right here in the user interface. These buttons are now a little, uh, you know, <laughs> not, not as prominent, which uh, had been bugging me. But then you can go into the settings which is of course where you uh, get pushed if you install this fresh. <clears throat> and the first thing that you have to do right here is of course the API key. So that needs to be uh, pasted in here. Now you see part of mine, which is why I can show it here. Um, but but basically uh, it's, it's just a string of letters and numbers and you just paste it in here. And then that's the minimum to get going with this. After that, you can click on okay and you can get started you know asking something and basically chatting same as um before and <laughs> there you go we're right here <clears throat> so uh we're in this kind of chat interface same uh, as we had in the previous versions now you already saw here uh, that a little bit more is enabled and i'll just walk you through the settings with this newer version um up top is the system message. This is basically the set of instructions that you tell OpenAI what to do with your prompt. Uh, so if you only want to generate code, for example, you can write this in here, uh, only generate SketchUp Ruby code. 
and that's what it'll do from there on out <laughs> if you ask for something um, if you don't have any particular requirements there, you can leave this empty, that's perfectly fine. Uh, if you want to have the system respond in Shakespearean English, say respond in Shakespearean English, and then it'll do that. <laughs> so, same, same as always. Um, anyways, uh, this is where it now gets interesting. So, a chat completion model is, of course, the model that you'd be using uh, with this, and what worked really well for me is the 3.5 uh, Turbo model because a it's capable and b it's cheap <laughs> so you can uh, use it and um, uh, you know, generate geometry and so on and so forth i haven't found too much of an improvement with a four model but um, now with this omni model we can actually do a little bit more which is great and feel free to you know look at all of these uh, all you need to do is have the exact spelling which is usually the t gpt dash and then the model um, and, and paste it in here, and if you type this wrong, you get an error, and it'll uh, tell you where to go and to fix it, basically. Then tokens, as before, is the length of the, um, you know, the, 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 the uh, um, in instructions, and um, tokens, of course, relates to how much money you're going to spend on this, because you pay by tokens. All of this is super cheap. Usually, you know, a few requests are less than a cent for me and, and I don't have to worry too much about it. But keep it in mind, um, especially if you use the more expensive models like the GPT-4 model, that can, you know, <laughs> get expensive, especially when you do vision, as I'm going to show you in a second. So, so keep that in mind, um, that you may want to have an eye on tokens. And actually, the number of tokens used, as you can see here on the right, for this particular interaction that I just had, <clears throat> is always shown, so you can kind of double check what's going on there, and you can then um, uh, adjust as needed. Temperature is as before, nothing, nothing new there. Uh, zero means it's a pretty deterministic answer, uh, and then the higher you go, the more creative this gets, up to wacko, <laughs> and so you may want to pick a number that works for you. I found point 0.1 is actually quite useful because I kind of like to have this somewhat predictable, but um, adjust as needed. You, know, uh, you, can, you can experiment with it. And then uh, from the versions before, we had the option to execute code. So if you want to use this to actually modify geometry or generate geometry, as I've described in my earlier videos, you might want to turn that on and then it'll execute the code that it generates and do something with your SketchUp model. You know, all caveats apply to that, obviously, as I've described on my website and in previous videos. But, but uh, in this case right now, I'm actually going to leave it off because I want to show you something else. Although it does help even with coding. <laughs> Anyways, but I'm going to leave this off for now. Next, um, this is the new stuff, these last three. So uh, let's go through them. Uh, first one is submit model view with request. What this does is it takes a screenshot of your model view, whatever's in your modeling win window, and it'll submit it with a request uh, without further ado. As you can see here, that actually just happened here. I just said hi there, and then it responds uh, with a with a you know nice hello, but then it talks about what it sees. So that's really useful. So you can do all kinds of things now. Um, the uh, setting just below that <clears throat> is the submission quality, uh, and this is described quite nicely on uh, OpenAI's website. But in in short, low means low resolution and low cost. High means high resolution and higher cost because uh, everything uh, with image is related to resolution. And so, so in that case, um, leave it low <laughs> unless you need it high. Uh, I haven't had a need for high so far, but you can switch it right here. Um, so those two are the are the are the vision um, options that are in this now, and you know you can just easily turn it on right here. Then the last item here submit number of prompts <clears throat> basically gives this system memory this is something that you know if you've used chat gpt or any of those before uh, you can say hi my name is alex and then it'll read you and then you can say hey what's my name and then uh it'll remember your name and and in our context here we can do follow-up questions you know we can ask something about the model and then 
it'll answer and we can follow up with something. So that is useful. Now, the way that this is implemented, however, is that the last number of prompts get submitted with the current prompt. And that's why I've implemented like this here, and it's all odd numbers. <clears throat> so if you only want your current prompt, your latest prompt to be considered, then set that to one. If you, you know, wanted to remember all kinds of <laughs> what you've talked about beforehand, you can set that higher. And I found, you know, three is actually a good number because then it remembers uh, the current prompt, the last prompt and its own answer. And, you know, remember, remember, take that word with caution. It basically just, you, you just give it all of that and then it can consider that in creating the new answer. So, um, yeah, in any case, this is up to you. Uh, one word of caution there is you see my tokens right here. If I n n now ask something else, the number of tokens will go up because I am also including these older um, uh, answers and questions together with a request. And so, of course, this has an impact on tokens and cost, therefore. So, but I'm going to leave it like this here for now. So three, um, and I'm going to submit the model view and I don't have any um, uh, anything in my system message. And I've got my 4.0 model right here so that we can experiment with that. Now, quick word of caution, <clears throat> the vision thing only works with some of their models. So if you still have the 3.5 turbo model in here, then it'll generate an error because that model cannot do vision. And so keep that in mind, you know, th that's why I keep all of this here open. You know, you can experiment all with all kinds of settings, but, but you can also, you know, mismatch some of them. So keep that in mind that if you do vision, I think the GPT-4 model does vision, but then 4.0 was actually a little cheaper in any case. So um, use that one. All right. So I'm just going to click on OK here. And I'm just going to cancel out of this just so that I get a clean slate right there. And then you can ask now um, things that you have in the model, uh, uh, questions about things that you have in the model. So. Um, uh, is, are there any improvements to the model? And at this point, it uploads a screenshot, <clears throat> thinks about it, and will give me some improvements. So you can think of this, of course, as <laughs> your, your friendly critique <laughs> at this point, um, or, or critique practice of your student. And, and um, you know, uh, as always, take takes things with a grain of salt, but I found this is actually kind of useful. All right, so what do we got here? Model you've shared appears to be a simple architectural structure, blah, blah, blah. Uh, detailing, add more details. Yeah, it's a little flat on the side, window frames, that kind of stuff. Um, roof design, nothing up there. Yeah, shingles, sounds good. Um, surroundings, uh, I got nothing there, so that would be nice. Uh, interior, maybe we want to see some interior. Structural elements, that's always useful. Uh, <laughs> lighting shadows, color materials, architectural features like a porch, balcony. Anyways, those kind of things. So you can you can um, start asking questions and you can um, uh, uh, you know get some feedback. And now because I also have memory enabled, I can ask a follow-up question. Um, uh, let's pick one of these. What we're going to do. On the st oh, yeah, structural elements. And let's see what it says. Now you see, of course, my number of tokens goes up because I'm sending the last answer back. And then within a short time frame. <laughs> It hopefully elaborates on this. Whoa, okay. That is certainly elaborating. Um, here you go. Certainly adding blah, 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 and so on and so forth. Beams and columns, foundations. Yeah, that would be useful. <laughs> Anyways, so you see the point. Um, you, can, you can ask these questions, uh, including what you see here. So how is this useful? Well, of course, you know, some kind of critique feedback is, is good. There are some other things that I've found work with this. One is this here. 
So if you're using um, SketchUp Diffusion or, or similar programs, um, you know, it basically generates a, a view, an AI generated view in this case, um, of your model and places it into your viewport as an overlay for a, for a tab. Now, since we can ask questions on anything that's visible in the viewport, it, you, it, the question could be about this one here too. So, so now I actually have an AI rendered image that I'm going to ask an AI question about. So we can see, um, is this model feasible? I don't know. <laughs> Come up with better questions, please. But um, now it'll basically send this rendered view up <clears throat> And it will hopefully in a second give me some kind of a feedback. Um, let's see. Let's see if it thinks that there should be a boat launch or something like this. I don't know what we got here. Structure. Da -da. Small wooden cabin by a lake with a so so as you can see that uh, has the visuals in there. Structure, integrity, materials to match those. Da -da -da. Dimensions, foundations, environmental conservation uh, considerations, building codes and regulations. I like that one. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. So uh, you know, I hope this this part is useful somehow. As um, you know, just kind of thinking about things that you may not have thought about during the modeling process, getting some feedback. You can actually also ask um, how something. Uh, um, looks in a certain context, you know, in the context of contemporary design or classic design or whatever, you know, all of those kind of things. Let me show you one more option. Um, if I have something like this, yeah, <clears throat> I can ask, is this model 3D printable? Now, mind you, it only knows what it can see. So uh, it basically sends up the, the picture and doesn't know what in this model is grouped and what is not grouped and so on and so forth. But, but you can um, use it as a, as a um, you know, starting point again. So right now here it says uh, it appears to be a 3D printable. However, <laughs> so overhangs and supports. There's a lot of overhanging parts here. So all of that joint mechanism. There seems to be a joint here. It realizes that, which is great. Uh, material choice, there's that, um, you know, different different materials. Uh, print orientation, this is always one of my immediate feedbacks for something like this here. Um, you may want to lay this flat or take it apart and so on and so forth. And anyways, it seems to be seems to be right there. Size, wall thickness and detail and so on. Anyways, yeah, so uh, push this any way you want. Um, this feature is now available. And uh, you can use it, you know, with, right within your model here. You just have to make sure OpenAI Explorer, the experimental uh, extension, is installed. <clears throat> you have to use a vision-capable uh, chat completion model right here. I'm using the 4.0, the Omni model, the new one. And oh, by the way, uh, this is an O as an Omni, not a zero. And um, and and then you can submit the. Um, model view with a request and you can turn on these other options and adjust as needed. So I hope this is useful. Um, give it a try. Let me know what you think of it. Um, and if anybody uh, has any improvement ideas, of course, for how this could be implemented, then let me know at any point. But, um, yeah, we create some cool stuff with this. All right, have fun.